Hi, it's the 15th of December, and it's... It's 6, 16. Good evening. And welcome to Geeks on Screen with Coffee, and today's guest is Catherine. How, how are you? Hello. Oh, wait a minute. Before we start. Where's it gone? I had it here a second. Oh, sorry. Right. Technical fail. There is. Before we start any kind of recording, we've got a sync sound of vision. And there you are. And this is where I get told off for look at that for spelling your name wrong. You spelled it correctly. Well, if you are at home, these are all see through. The green ones are see through. Right. I did spend a little time me double checking that I got it right. Sorry. Blah. Welcome to Geeks on Screens on Coffee. And I guess the Thank first question you. is, what are you drinking? I'm drinking coffee. Ooh. I thought that was mandatory for this show. Um, I'm drinking one of those little pods that you put in the machine, and then it gives me nice coffee. It's uh, Grande Intenso, I think. It's a darker kind of coffee, so very black. So is that a Nespresso? or No, uh, Dolce Gusto. Dolce Gusto, okay. Yeah. don't think I've tried that. I've got I've got a pod machine, but I stopped using it because the pods just seemed quite expensive. Yeah, they are. It's I mean, it's for special occasions like this with you. Oh, for me. Yeah, with you. Oh, thank you. How are you? Um, that's a loaded question. Uh, <laughs> I, I think this year it's it's uh, it's kind of a tricky question. Um, I'm doing okay, I guess. And how are you right now? So we'll do the, How are you right now? And we can then expand to how have you been? Right us. now, I'm great. Okay. It's it's great being here talking to you and actually, you know, seeing people, interacting with uh, community people. It's always nice. I am people. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how, I get the more loaded question, how has your pandemic been? It's been difficult. Um, it's been very difficult for me and, uh, I'm currently on sick leave actually. So I haven't been working for a couple of months now. Uh, so I've pretty much hit a wall this year. Um, and it's, it's been a difficult year for, for many others, I guess. Um, for me, it was mainly just about losing the entire community and my entire network in just one day. Uh, everything just kind of disappeared when, you know, no more travels, no more events, no more community. And that's been a massive part of my life. It's pretty much been my life for the last five years. Uh, so in one day, it was just like everything is gone. And that's been difficult. Um, and on top of that, I had a very fun and interesting project, but it was also very challenging. And then it just kind of too much. So difficult year, um, as I guess with many others. Uh, at the same time, I'm super lucky and privileged because I still have a job. Um, I'm healthy. My family's healthy. My friends are healthy. And I don't really have anything to complain about. So it's, um, it's, it's been a very strange year, I guess you can say. So that's, that's the loaded question. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we're all going to say fine, aren't we? Um, yeah. I mean, how am I really doing? Well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm a man who sits sits in his office and tries to get some sort of social interaction with other people. I'm clearly a man having a breakdown, but you know, we, we can talk around that. Um, yeah. I didn't mention, God, I keep forgetting to do this. So you are a, uh, a sequel data geek, MVP yeah. speaker, blogger, talk taller on Twitter. Yes. Now this is obviously from your Twitter bio, but where yeah. did that come from? <laughs> So that came from, well, if, if you're watching me on screen and you haven't met me in person, I kind of look like a normal person, I guess. And from my Twitter profile picture, if you all, all you see is my, my head, um, you probably have some expectations of my height in real life. Um, and I've actually been at a couple of different events where um, I've been chatting with people. And then I can remember once that was at Sequel Bits a couple of years back. And this, this guy, he turned around and he was like, he just stared at me in the strangest way. I'm like, well, what, what's going on? It's like, are you Catherine? Like, yes. It's like, wow, you're so much shorter than I thought. And I've had that reaction a couple of times. So 
kind of just put a uh, disclaimer on my profile there. I'm, I'm taller on Twitter. So yeah, I, I look up to everyone. It's what I say. <laughs> but in, in a metaphysical way, we, we're looking up to you. Thank you. That's that's kind. Well, you are the. I mean, I would describe you as the queen of Bimmel. I'm not sure if that's a title you you're happy to wear. Yeah. Um. I guess I <laughs> I was the second Bimmel hero after Andy Andy Leonard, so it was a very proud moment for me. Um. So yeah, we we do have. Um. There is one more woman who's a Bimmel hero now, which is very cool. But I was the only one for a while, so I could I could claim that title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. she'll, she'll, she'll be a princess or a duchess or something, but you can be the queen. Queen, queen. It's, I like queen. It is when I think of Bimmel, I think of you and Andy. Obviously, not walking together with crowns on. I just, you know, I'm, I mean, now <laughs> no I'm case. imagining it, but, you know, with a scepter, you know, red carpet, you know. Yeah, we, big... we could probably work something out. <laughs> and, uh, and, well, um, well, we'll go back to sci fi because there's something I wanted to talk about. I think that you're probably a more appropriate person to talk to about than Steph. I'll, I'll explain. But okay. Bunny hands. Yes. So I I'm doing this, but this isn't bunny hands. Bunny hands is this. No, it's so so. This is I just I need to sit up straight for a little bit. So bunny hands is um I had a bad habit uh, when I started speaking that um, I was, you know, holding the clicker and I always talk with my hands. Um, but when I wasn't talking with my hands, my hands were kind of just up here and they were just kind of flopping around like little bunny ears displaced. So, um, and apparently this is very distracting if you're watching someone speak for an hour and they're just like flopping around on stage. Um, and uh, that's the story of how I met my best friend, Alexander. He was oh. the one who mentioned that to me. Well, hopefully he he is watching. Um, and so I was watching you two present together. Mm -hmm. Um, at I, that was Data Scotland. Was it Data Scotland? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And you were there, and you had this kind of really good rapport with him, where kind of yeah, you know, he's talking, you know, you talk, he talks. He's really quite quite natural, and he can be quite insulting to you. I I, I did I. Did, find that but it oh, is very yes. funny but i'm intimidating so i mean we kind of it, it kind of goes back and forth a bit um i've scared him a few times okay yeah no uh so um that was that well the whole story here is um one of my first speaking gigs in gothenburg in sweden i was talking for an hour i was talking at full speed as well because i was talking about them and i was super excited and i was very much you know floppy bunny hands with high pitch voice for an hour um i feel bad for those in the audience but i think they got something out of it um, but that's when he came up to me afterwards and he said uh hi i'm alexander uh you have bunny hands I was like okay and then he explained the whole thing and then he was like i do you know sessions on presentation skills and i have some feedback for you and we've been best friends ever since because he was just we're very much the same kind of person we're just very open direct and we say what we think um and then at the following past summit um he was there and he had, you know, big eyes because, you know, all the sequel people that he were looking, he was looking up to, um, so especially Guy in a Cube. And I've met Adam Saxon at a previous event. So I was like, oh, there was Adam. And Alex suddenly goes like, oh, he's, you know, he's in the <laughs> registration yeah. area. And I'm like, let's go talk to him. It's like, Alexander, this is Adam. And then they were like, okay, I'm meeting my, my, uh, you know, idol from from youtube here uh but then they went out they had dinner it's you know the sequel family that we talk about you just kind of include everyone and you go and you do fun things and uh but he told me afterwards that it was it was kind of scary having this little short girl just kind of drag you over to a person you've been idolizing for a while and they'll just go here go talk chat have fun go so yeah um and that's the story of how we became best friends and how he kind of dragged into all of the fun stuff that we do. The dragged you in, how dare you? Um, yes, yes. And then I dragged him around. I, I, I did that at every past summit. I, uh, because that's how I got introduced to this community. Someone welcomed me. They kind of dragged me along with them and, you know, introduced them to new people. And I've made an effort to do that at every event, past summit, sequel bits, other events just kind of you know if people are 
kind of interested, they're they're getting dragged. I'm uh, aggressively nudging people to you know go go meet people in the community because they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite intim- intimidating. It is though when you see, and plus if you see some of the people that kind of you you know you you've read their blogs, whatever. Um, uh, or you've listened to their you know, like podcasts, or you know, you know, you kind of feel you you know you know a bit about them, but they're there over there. You don't want to necessarily interrupt them because you feel like, well, what have I got to add to that conversation? Or you know, well, oh, kind of they're they're clearly too famous for me. I'm um, you know, I'll just get in the way. And, uh, yep, I've been there, and that's uh, how I feel at most events. I, I I still kind of do, but I guess I've made so many friends now that there is always, you know, someone there to to go and chat with. Um, but I very much know that feeling. And um, people don't believe me when I say this, but before I started getting involved in the community, I could barely talk to people. I was, you know, super socially awkward. I was shy. Um, I was absolutely terrified of, of just talking to people. But then I met people who are, you know, peers. I can talk to others about tech and geeky stuff. And, you know, I kind of feel at home in this community. Uh, and that just kind of made me go like, oh, my people. Um, <laughs> and then you can, you know, you have something in common that makes it easier. But I had the same experience. It was like, oh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen your sessions. I read your book. I've watched your videos. Um, so it's a very surreal experience when uh, it's the opposite of uh, way around now when people come up to me and they're like, oh, are you Catherine? I'm like, yeah. can you sign my Bimmo book? And I'm like, oh, this is just, I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm just laughing because this is a surreal experience for me. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm just me. I'm, I've always been just me. And then it's, yeah, very strange. But, but most people are absolutely amazing in this community. Do you, do you enjoy that, that sort of notoriety? No, try is that um, in for me? No, uh, that. Yeah, so, no. <laughs> Sorry, you, you enjoy, enjoy that. When what stories have you me. heard? Yeah. Oh, we'll get onto that later. <laughs> um, but well, that you know, you enjoy. You don't find that um, too awkward or whatever when people come up to you and. It can be awkward, um, but I guess it's kind of just how you react to it. Now, I mean, I'm I'm not super famous I don't have you know a queue of people coming up to me so the couple of times when they do um, it's usually a very positive experience because it means that I've done something to help them in some way and they want to say thank you is, is usually what the story is and that just makes me feel good because that's why I do these things I want to help others and you know um, help them to not get stuck on the same problems that I have and and actually hearing that from someone that the time and effort I've put into that has actually helped them that's that's a wonderful feeling do you get people asking you about your process about how you write your sessions or how you write your blogs whether it's purely based on oh I did it at work or something you're interested in because I find that people do stuff in different ways Oh, yeah. Um, Everyone has their own process and um, it depends on what they want to do. Um, So sometimes I I have people, you know, asking me about um, professional development sessions. That's usually after I've delivered a professional development session on speaking or getting involved. Obviously, the follow up questions to that is um, some of the best discussions that I have because I usually end up learning more than them, probably because I'm just hearing about their thought process and their ideas and the things that they want to do. Um, and that gives me a bunch of ideas. So I think that's probably my favorite part of doing any events. Just being on stage talking about me is boring for me. Um, but the conversations that you have afterwards, they're super rewarding. Um, but yeah, it, it depends on what people want to do. And that's also kind of what I tell them that you need to find the thing that you want to do, something that uh, excites you, something that, you know, interests you. Just doing something because you feel like you have to do it, you're, you're not going to get very far because that's, that's not good for anyone in the long run, unless you get paid for it and you call it your job, in which case it's probably okay. Sorry, Benny just put into the, the chat window that um, socially awkward, isn't that a requirement of being part of the sequel crowd? I think they... probably which is which is why i feel at home you know you're my people <laughs> you see that's where you are the only a queen would say you're my people 
<laughs> How's that royal? I know. I kind of feel like we're like, this is my group here. I, I feel like I belong finally. I mean, I had many years of not belonging and uh, now I'm here in my crowd. <laughs> I think the, um, the first sequel bits I went to, I think I only talked to like one person and we were just, it was like a school disco. We were sort of standing around the edge, watching stuff happen, kind of not feeling you can sort of join in. And then kind of, um, and then as, as the sequel bits go on, you sort of then, you know, you sort of come out of that and you start to do things, especially when you volunteer. And I, I found that that was probably one of the things that got me into doing more community stuff and getting yep. to know people and then not feeling like, oh, these are amazing people. I can't talk to them. Um, and they're, they're, you know, like the Allens, they're just, they're just normal scum like everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just, you know, normal people. But I, I think that was key for me as well, um, because I, I did start uh, organizing and speaking probably around the same time as volunteering. But volunteering is what kind of brought me out of my shell um, that helped me get past being shy because when you volunteer and especially at sequel beds because you wear these orange shirts they're you know very famous orange shirts um so when you put on that shirt you put on a role um and when you're volunteering you're there for a purpose you have a job you know whether it's you know guiding people to toilets are that way or lunch is this way or you know come and watch whoever's uh, presenting but it's kind of a job and a role and I think in the beginning I was kind of acting because like, you know, you kind of have to be outgoing. You have to nudge those people, the ones who are, you know, who I used to be standing in a corner or around the edges, you know, like, do you need help with anything? Can I help you? Um, and that just kind of, I think that was what helped me get into small talk and uh, approaching people and uh, all the things that, you know, normally social people do. Um, but you get that kind of practice in in a safe role because you're there to do a job. Um, so that was that was crucial for me to uh, to be there at Sequel Bits for for days, um, and you know meeting people like you and everyone else in the community, and and then you start meeting people at more events that you go to, and then you know suddenly it's uh, it's like your second family. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess I go to Sequel Bits now not for the talks, just to meet up with the people that I haven't seen. Which is kind of, I guess, one of the things about the way things are currently is we don't get that opportunity that once every however long to just get, sit down on a beanbag with someone that you haven't seen for a year, catch up, and then, you know, you'll chat to someone else you haven't seen, and then you'll chat to someone else, and you'll go, oh, okay, and those connections of... I was talking to Steph last week, that those connections were the ones that it's got me jobs. So yep, knowing pretty those, much knowing those people, well, I assumed that well, knowing those people from community stuff, then they think of you when kind of they're they're, they're they're about jobs, and then that helps you to progress in your career. And it has this sort of, I think I had to explain it to my wife. There was like a why I would run a user group, why every one night I would be leaving, I would wouldn't be home till after ten, and why you know. I'd be grumbling that no one helped me put the chairs away or whatever, or kind of, you know, the stuff that kind of you do as a user group leader. So, you know, well, what are you getting out of it? Well, you know, it, the idea, it will pay off at some point. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for it to pay off, but, you know, but it does, it does pay off in your career and, and it's, and in your personality. But it's interesting. I think just to rewind back that you say that, Helping at things like sequel bits and organizing stuff and has rubbed off on your personality. Well, I still think I'm still playing a role when I wear it, when I wear a shirt of sequel bits. I can be much louder and much more obnoxious, I feel, than I can normally. And I think a lot of people feel the same way. Um, that I'm loud whether it's, you know, that, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's the first impression everyone gets. <laughs> No, I've actually never thought of you uh, as that. It's, it's been more kind of like, who who is this person in this mask that I can't figure out who is? And then you're just kind of stalking around the the party. Um, but but no, whether you're a volunteer or a speaker or an organizer, you're still in that kind of role. It's it's a job. It's um 
uh, it, for me, it's, it's kind of safe as well. It's like you're, you, you know, you don't necessarily put on a mask, but there is something, there's that role, there are expectations, and it just allows you to be a little bit more outgoing because you have to do these things. Um, organizing as well, I mean, you have to get up in front of all the people who are there and, and give them directions and, and say welcome and, you know, make sure that things are, are running the way it's supposed to be. Um, and, and because you have to do these things, you're kind of constantly challenging yourself like micro challenges. And then that just helps you grow, um, gets you out of your comfort zone. I think that's a good point in time to, um, to talk about something I've, I've been meaning to talk about with you for ages is um what is your favorite cheese i like gradost squeeze me it, yes uh gradost uh no so this is um that's actually a swedish word uh i think it means cream cheese um but it's it's kind of like um a white regular cheese but it's a little bit more has more fat in it it's a little bit more salty um it's just yeah it's it's a very uh typical thing that i need to have around christmas time um like now but i'm also a big cheddar fan yeah i mean cheddar's all right i mean it's it's a bit vanilla isn't it it's a bit sort of well i'm norwegian i mean our our food is bland uh it's it's like white boiled fish and boiled potatoes so cheddar is like whoo whoa or tone down the the flavor there um right this is going to sound really culturally insensitive isn't it i can't remember which, which which is it norwegian country has the buried shark the fermented shark that's sweden sweden yes. uh, has norway got its own version of that no we have uh uh, uh fish in lye lutefisk that's kind of the norwegian tradition so we we soak codfish in lye for a while until it's like gelatinous and, and gooey and then we just put lots of bacon on it i've never tried it uh, oh, maybe I did try it once last year, but, but, but I mean, I mean, you could just do the bacon without the fish with fly is, is my opinion on that. But that's, that's a huge tradition in, in uh, a lot of Western Norway, at least all these weird things just to preserve the fish. Yeah. Well, you've got to, I guess if you've got, you've got to preserve the food over winter and summer and kind of it's, you know, yeah. or you have seasonal stuff and yeah. you want to try and preserve that stuff. You know, not the only culture that, that, that buries food for, for, for other reasons or just shoves it in salt. Yeah, if we you... do that with, um, that's another Christmas tradition, uh, pinnashot. Uh, I, 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 it's directly translated to stick meat, uh, but it basically <laughs> just uh, um, lamb meat. ribs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, it's super salted and dried and cured. And then you have to, you know, water it out for two days before you heat it up again for it to be edible. And that's just like a tradition from way, way back when you had to cure the meat or salt the meat or do something. Um, but that's ab absolutely delicious. I do you like saying I, I eat stick meat for, for Christmas? Yeah, I mean, it sounds, yeah. I think in the, in, in the UK, we, we've got a version of that and we call that pepperami. I think that probably are our stick meat because yeah. that is meat in a stick form yeah if you could probably call it meat i'm not sure if it's really it's technically <laughs> meat it's probably well, this, is, this is proper meat but yeah. uh the technique where you put actual sticks in the bottom of a pot and you fill up the water and then you kind of steam it so that's where the norwegian name is from and then i just i like wrote, like directly translating things because it sounds funny <laughs> and my humor is awesome so what other, I mean, I could say, what other crazy Norwegian traditions are there? So what is a Christmas, a, a normal Norwegian Christmas? You... Uh, that depends on where you live in the country. So we have very different traditions based on where you're from. So the part that I'm from, uh, Oslo and the eastern parts of Norway, um, we eat a lot of pork. So we have um, pork belly with uh, the crispy skin uh, as a big thing. For us, um, on the West Coast, they have uh, pinnachot, or stick meat, the lamb. Uh, up north, a lot of fish. Um, so you can kind of place people based on their their food preferences for, uh, for Christmas. Um, and then, you know, nowadays with people moving around and uh, families from different parts of the country, you end up with like weird mixes of things. So everyone kind of makes their own tradition, which I guess is probably the same in every country. 
Um, but no, we, we have a lot of traditions. I think the one that um, is Christmas for me is at noon on Christmas Eve because we celebrate on Christmas Eve, not on Christmas Day. So at noon we eat uh, porridge um, and then we put a little almond in there. And the one who gets the portion with the almond wins a little marzipan peg. That's that's a very Norwegian thing, I think. Marzipan pig. Marzipan. Yeah, yeah. It's just marzipan, but it's shaped like a pig, and sometimes it's covered in chocolate. But that's a prize. You win. It's a fun thing. I mean, uh, all of these things, I guess, is from, you know, uh, parents just trying to keep the kids calm until it's time for, to open presents, because we do that after dinner on Christmas Eve. So, you know, you have the entire day just waiting to open the presents, and you kind of have to keep them entertained. So I have no idea why um, certain cultures have open stuff on Christmas Eve. And it used to be Boxing Day was the day you opened your presents in the UK. I don't know how long ago that was, but and, but not on Christmas Day. Is that, it is that why moved. it's called Boxing Day? Yeah, Boxing. I thought that was a reason. Right, we weren't out. Like I don't think it was like, you know, fisticuffs. I think Alexander's just put in sceptical Swede about <laughs> <laughs> whether it's on the food. Because of the delay, I'm not sure if it's on the food choices or something else. Um, but yeah, it's hard, hard to know. So effectively, so what happens on Christmas Day then? So Christmas, so Christmas Eve, you have your the Christmas dinner, the, the dinner, the present opening. And then yeah. what's what will happen on Christmas Day? Yeah, so Christmas Eve is like you, you dress up, you have a nice dinner, you spend time with family. Um, Christmas Day, for, for my family, it's just, you know, pajamas all day, eating leftovers and stuffing your face with with candy, uh, watching movies or going outside if there's snow, uh, sledding. Um, but it's kind of, it's, it's a slow day. It's a relaxing day. Um, some people go and have meet more family members for Christmas lunch. Um, but for me, that's, that's kind of just been like, Ooh, we had one day of like, uh, lots of activity and lots of excitement. And then now we're just going to relax and enjoy. And then do you have like the, a boxing day? Like, so effectively your Christmas day is like our boxing day where we just sit back, do nothing, eat the leftovers. You know. Pretty much. Um, so what we call, we have uh Christmas Eve and then kind of the, the first Christmas day and the second Christmas day. So the second one on the 26th, um, yeah. that's when we eat the second big meal of Christmas. So we have the pork on Christmas Eve, and then we have uh, the lamb stick meat um, on uh, the 26th. So we have, and, and I think that's just my family because we had uh, my mom's side and my dad's side, and then we met up at, you know, just trying to get all the family members together. Um. And apparently, uh, the twenty sixth is also when apparently all the, all the kids and all the teenagers and young adults go out and have a big party. I don't know. I was I was never part of that kind of social crowd before, but apparently that's a thing as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm hearing everything on the news now with the pandemic. They're like, so no big parties on you know the twenty sixth this year, and I'm like. Yeah, okay. That's that's fine. I can I can do that. How's that affecting your Christmas? Is it just wrecking your Christmas? The pandemic is or are you able to no. actually meet up with some family? Yeah, so I'm I'm spending Christmas with uh with my parents and my foster brother. Um and I also have my my sister and her family, but um they're celebrating with her daughter's dad's family this year so you know we're, we're we were kind of divided already so we were expecting it to be a small family gathering and um uh but yeah it's it's still it's gonna it's gonna be a weird christmas this year i think yeah i, I think we've got our lockdown restrictions i've been lifted from like the 23rd to the 27th so effectively i'm i'm gonna collect my parents drive them up here and then and then you know try not to kill them when they're up here and then drive them back 
Yeah, I know. It's the, the same thing on the news is like, oh, you can only meet up to 10 people on two different days, whether that's, you know, Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. But if you do meet 10 people on each of those days, you should probably not meet anyone else on the other days. But if you don't do that, you can meet five people. On, I'm like, just, just just stick with the closest family this year and, you know, try and be um, sensible. All right. What else have I got? Oh, I was going to mention. Oh, OK, there's. Uh, what should we do first? There's a couple of things I've got. We we weren't really going to talk about Christmas. It's just sort of, um, all right. I'm going to. It's the season. Well, all right, and, and so this is Christmas ish. Have you seen Back to the Future? Yes. You've seen Back to the Future one, two, and three. I presume. Yes. Because I've talked to people who'd a guy who'd only just seen Back to the Future one, two, and three. And he right. was amazed at kind of how it was. And then I was pointing out some of the differences in the movie that, you know, that George isn't George in the second film. Uh, was that... Have you seen? I haven't watched them that many times. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right. So I was talking with Steph about how they changed time travel. And I yeah. wonder what your opinion was on time travel in movies. Um... Since you like a bit of sci-fi. I do. I've, I've seen so many different versions of time travel um, where, you know, from you can go back and meet your past self and do this and that and to the butterfly effect where, you know, you do one thing and then it changes everything. Um, I think I'm kind of glad that I, I haven't experienced time travel because it sounds very complicated. Um, I think I think it's highly it's highly unlikely you, you'll experience one form of time travel. But you're always experiencing one form. We're always going back or forwards in time. Yep. It's going the other way, which will be a struggle. But yes. It was. Yeah, it's just they they change the way time travel works, and I just and um, someone pointed out that um, Steph looked really bored while I was talking about it. That was all. <laughs> so I thought I wouldn't bring it up. Yeah, um, I could I could probably talk about that for for many many hours. I mean, it, it comes up in some shape or form in pretty much every kind of sci-fi story or universe out there. Um, and if it's not time travel, it's just, you know, hop over to a different dimension and, you know, start a new timeline there. And then it just all gets confusing. But it's, it's a very easy trick for, for um, writers or uh, movie producers. They're like, how do we reboot this for the 17th time? Let's just switch to a different dimension and start over there. You know, Star Trek. Well, they're supposed to link in some way. Yeah, they? they do. They yeah. do. They, they yeah. get, well, yeah. there's a few things like the Klingons changing. Yeah. Which then they try to jokingly sort of make it, they make references to, like, when someone goes, really? That's a Klingon? They didn't, didn't they? Point? They didn't, no? No? Well, if you've seen the original series, the Klingons were just, you know, humans with some makeup on so i mean they already kind of changed so so are you a star trek fan yeah i'm i'm more a star trek fan uh is is this a star trek versus star wars discussion or is it just no. general star trek? <laughs> no 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 just no no I, i'm watching is it discovery at the moment yes yeah and, and great, I'm, I'm quite great enjoying that but then, um, I'm very much enjoying that. But I watched the Star Trek series in the completely the wrong order. So I started with Voyager um, and then with Captain Janeway. You know, it was kind of right. what dragged me into the whole universe. Um, enjoyed that one. And then I started watching Deep Space Nine. And then I saw Next Generation. And then after that, I watched the original series, which is like, I just had to get through it. It's a very interesting to watch that 40 <laughs> years later. Um <laughs> And then Enterprise, and then obviously now is, is the first time I'm actually watching one of the series as it's being aired with uh, with Discovery. But yeah, it's fun. I, I just, uh, I love sci-fi, uh, anything sci-fi fantasy, just so I can escape from, from reality, pretty much. Just something completely different than what I do every day. I, I do love the idea that you, 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 you forced your... I'm old enough to have watched some of the... Uh, not obviously come out at the time, but the reruns of kind of, of of Star Trek. So I remember that at the time and they weren't as, you know, there were the flimsy sets, 
you know, the rubber mask and, you know, and... Um, oh, the fighting. Yeah, the with the re- Very and... realistic fighting with the masks and I don't know what the crocodile dinosaur thingy and one of the first oh, it was it was excellent great entertainment i have to say i was laughing a lot where i was probably not supposed to laugh but you know no and the lines like i'm a i'm a doctor not a bricklayer jim you know and, <laughs> and oh. it's excellent is this a great study in you know cultural differences in a generation or two though it is and obviously the stuff that's in and i think Star Trek was famous for having the first um in was it interracial kiss on screen? I think so, yes. I mean just having Uhura there was, you know, that was a big thing. Um and then you see you see kind of the same thing with uh, the Discovery series now that they're bringing up all of these um, you know, social issues that we're facing today in a different setting. And that was, you know, the whole original Star Trek as well, um, whether it was politics or something in society that they were bringing up and criticizing, just, you know, call it Klingons and uh, whatever instead. Um, it it kind of makes you think. And and I think I quite like that about Star Trek. Yeah, but it's, I, I mean, I, I watch it for the, for the fun and the frolics. And, yes. And it doesn't... And big booms. Booms, you said. Good, okay. Yes, yes big, big explosions. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure where you were going with that one. No, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's escapism, and it doesn't quite take itself so seriously. Yeah. As um, so, right, okay. If you if you liked sci-fi, did you ever watch um, Babylon Five? No, I started watching it, but then that I I think I started watching it. A little too early um so i kind of i kind of lost track on that um i can't remember why it was it was just difficult to get into at the time when i started watching it yes yeah it, well it's yes it's it's a long it's it's a whole arc of a kind of i can't remember how many hours on how many series of, of stuff um and one of my favorite episodes of that um wasn't on the ship wasn't anything it was just these two maintenance guys going around fixing stuff yeah and then there have been other similar references to kind of like um oh are you watching the mandalorian uh yes but i'm i'm not up to date so no no spoilers uh just just references about um and i think it's, it's it's mentioned in other jokes about there were lots of people on the death star who were just like cleaners Yep. You know, maintenance people just fixing stuff, you know, they, you know, and they were just doing their job and then they got blown up. You know, it was kind of, you know, they, they weren't, they weren't out hurting anyone. They were just trying to make money for their family back on Alderaan. Mm-hmm. Obviously it wasn't a great planet to live on <laughs> in hindsight. Sorry. Is that, we've gone to, we've gone down the geeky rabbit hole. Um, no, it's it's just I can't I I can't follow along with all the references in a show I haven't watched. But uh, have you not seen any Star Wars? No Star Wars I've seen. Yeah. Oh, oh, Alderaan was the planet that was blown up in the first Star Wars. Oh, okay. Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. I have to apologize to Alexander now. So I actually I I only just earlier this month rewatched all the movies all nine or six if we just forget the the middle ones um yeah so I w- i've been more on star trek um uh, but i couldn't remember the name of that planet so sorry just don't don't, sorry. don't beat, beat we, me up on that we won't tell anybody no no one sorry you you there's a re- there's some references to it in the mandalorian so okay just just be it was one of the, it was the first planet that was blown up in the first film so All right yeah don't ever move to order on good good point okay uh oh, we're running out of time okay uh christ certainly <laughs> exactly yeah, I, I did tell you weeping. just you know if you ask me questions you just have to cut me off at some point because i i ramble no no i ramble just as much if not more I yeah just... so I, I have something actual geeky stuff that I can probably ask you about. Oh, which, oh, which way yes. is that? Yes. So on the on the eighth of December, 
I did. Yes. I, mean, I, I did. I do some research. I don't just <laughs> randomly. You were presenting to a whole load of people at a Microsoft run event, weren't you? Um, I wasn't presenting. I, oh. I participated in a, a panel discussion. Oh, a panel. Yes. It's the yeah. Same thing. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of. Um, but yeah, so this this part here is exciting. Um, this is actually one of the things I've been working on for most of this year. Um, I've been working on an uh, Azure Synapse project since March, so I've been lucky enough to you know go through all the pain points before it came you know generally available. Um, and yeah, this this is probably what I'm excited about for next year once I get back into things and kind of shifting back into blogging and speaking and things like that. Ooh, what's your favorite bit? Well, uh, pipelines. Pipeline. See, that's a bit I don't really touch. Yeah, you because know, th that's that's the world that I'm coming from. You know, the data engineering yeah. side with, you know, all the way back from SSIS and BIML and Data Factory, and now with the pipelines part, I just I just I move data. That's that's what I do. So that's kind of my my focus. So this is not a leading question. This is because I don't know I, I don't know the answer because I don't do stuff in that. You know, I dabble. I, I can throw a pipeline together. Whether it'll work or not, I mean, it's not going to work, but I can throw it together. What's the differences between doing, apart from that, there's a few extra components in in Synapse Integrate. Um, I mean, is that what you is that what we should call it? Um, integrate. I'm not sure. I I, mean, just, I just call it pipelines because it's stuck in my brain. So is there? I mean, and was that what it was called in earlier versions? Because the names Probably. have changed. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's you know. gone back and forth many times. Yeah, I I sometimes use the wrong words for the bits that I work in. So what? Yeah. But well, so what's better about it than doing stuff indirectly in ADF? Um, I'm not sure it's it's better. It's it's just like you get the whole package, so it's a lot easier to work with other people in a team or in a company that you're working for uh, when I'm doing projects. Um, and, and that's the whole point of Synapse. You know, you're bringing together different roles and different users and, and kind of different worlds into to one interface. Um, and it just makes it easier to be able to have those conversations with those who are working in, you know, notebooks or doing something else that you can kind of look at it without context switching back and forth. Um, and then, you, I mean, you have the, the new components as well that you can run the little synapse things like notebooks, you know, from, from within, um, the pipelines that you're creating there. I quite so, like the little icon above the notebook that just says create pipeline. And then yeah. I, say, what? I don't even have yeah. to, I don't have to go into that bit. It just magically does that for me. Um, yeah. and the same thing with note for notebooks and for, I don't think it does it for SQL yet, does it, for SQL scripts? There are so many context menus that, and, and they, you know, they've added so many things that you, if you right click on it, you're like, oh, look, there's this thing I can do here without having to do it manually, which is, which is great. So do you have a, and I, so lots of people ask this question and because it's still so new, um, I've, I've only been able to answer it in a certain, certain ways. Is that when you have multiple teams, uh, you, you, know, you will have a, a workspace for you know, one team to work on, and maybe a workspace for then deploying to, because you'll need to then do an automated deployment to another workspace, um, and then having multiple. You know, how how have you seen how that works, or have you worked with that? No, I've um, the projects I've worked on are uh, just single teams. So we haven't been into uh, we haven't actually hit on that part yet. Um, so it's you know it's kind of the same with Data Factory. You need multiple workspaces or instances to to do deployment between um, different environments. But when it comes to teams, and and that's a difficult question because you know the answer is always it depends. Um, you know, how, how much do you want to expose between teams? Sometimes you need something that is completely separate from everything else because of, you know, personal information or something like that. Um, other times you just kind of want separate workflows. Um, so that that is a tricky question, I think. Um, this is kind of the, the, the kind of topics that I'm excited about digging more into next year, um, learning about the processes and how do we actually use this new tool um, or suite of tools 
pretty much, um, and kind of build up the little best practices around that. Yeah, I mean, I so, so I I don't really know because I barely touch on that. You know, I know it's there. I can I can drag stuff on and I can use the wizard to create little bits and go yay. But I I focus in the kind of the MPP engine and then and the serverless and. You know, and a bit like the Power BI bit, it's there. I can go into it. I can show a Power BI report. And I, and I can drag bits onto it and go, yeah, it works. But I don't really know how it, how it's working or how best to organise that. Um, I just know there are certain limitations, especially in service around workspaces. Um, and that's just because of the SQL instance that runs in the background. Um, I don't know whether there's any kind of nuances for pipelines. So it's different from you have to know or I mean no. I guess, so someone asked me why if they're doing a new project now would you say don't worry about EDF do it in a workspace uh again it depends I, I think that that's you know that my entire life is going to be it depends going forward um because it, no it's and, and i'm dead serious when i say that because there are so many possibilities now it was much easier when you only had like ssis and you kind of had to make things work within that and then you created all of these best practices around that because of the limitations and now you kind of have to rethink that you know that might not be a best practice that you can bring into this new data engineering world um and it, it's kind of the same thing there where uh, you know, it completely depends on what you want to do. If if all you need is to do some automated data movement or data copying, you might not need the other features. So maybe you still want to use Synapse for that and just not pay for the data warehousing part because maybe you want to expand into that later, or maybe that's just overkill because it's going to be confusing having all those options there for the rest of the team. Um, so all of that is going to be discussion sad. I think different projects, different companies need to to have internally. I mean, you don't you don't have a data unless you go into actively create one. You don't have one. I mean, no. you've got the you've got the serverless thing there, which you don't have to use. So you're not paying for it. It's just whether it's a nicer experience. So if people said, "Shall I create?" A data warehouse now i'd say yeah create it in synapse because you've got the nice user interface and you've got the source control stuff you you don't have if you were just creating it outside but adf had that before so i guess it's not quite the same comparison no so i think the the adf experience if you look at that isolated it's, it's pretty much the same yeah. thing so if you're coming from that then you're just going to have all these other things and if you're not going to use them then maybe that's just noisy if, if your task is very specific, um, but then it might be, um, I would actually recommend just kind of trying Synapse right now because you're not paying for anything that you um, are not using um, because maybe you start seeing things that you might not have thought of in ADF with the serverless, with querying files where they are instead of having to move data around. Um, so I think I would I would kind of nudge people over to to Synapse just to kind of see the possibilities that you have there. But if you have a very small specific project, I mean, do you use the the service that's uh, kind of suited for that? And it's easy to kind of switch back and forth as well. I mean, it's the same thing underneath pretty much. So if you want to migrate it over, you can. We haven't talked about your house. And My we're not, house. We're not, all right. I've got all right. So you can choose which question you answer. Um, your house behind door number one is. Or yeah, um, your house discuss, and door number two is Bush Gardens discuss. My house, definitely my house. <laughs> okay, Although right. I can't, I can do both if we have time for that. Um, my house is exciting. Um, it's it's absolutely amazing having a physical project where I can, you know, I can tear things down and knock down walls and you know use a sledgehammer and just paint and not think about anything else because, um, especially this year when my brain isn't really working the way I want it to, I need downtime. Um, otherwise I'm, you know, constantly churning and I can't really be creative if everything is just a big mess up here. So I need something physical to distract me. And that's kind of what my, my house is offering right now. So painting and renovating and I got new stairs today. They're beautiful. New um, stairs. How new stairs. Get, how does, I mean, how does someone get new stairs? 
Well, you have to order them and then they make them uh, and then they come and they actually just remove the sears. So I've had four days of climbing up ladders and sleeping on the couch because I couldn't get upstairs to where I am right now. Um, but that just let me finish all the painting behind the stairs. Um, and then they come and it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You just put the pieces together and then you attach it to the wall and ta-da, new stairs. Are they just this, uh, like a, a standard flight against the wall or do they curve yeah. round? No, very simple. Although it's kind of curved um, at the bottom. So it's it kind of looks like it's a corner staircase but it's not so very fancy. Yeah, uh, compared at least compared to the, the old ones that have been here since 1969, I think. It's an old, horrible pine beast. And now I have nice new shiny white stairs. Yay! <laughs> I mean, we have stairs and it's, a, it's an, we're in an old house. We've had some, we're having some work done and there were some, they used some newspaper and they covered some beams with it. And they're from 18, I think it was from 1880. Right. Um, so it's kind of, the house is old. Um, yeah. And the stairs, if, um, let's imagine, so, so, someone like Alex Whittles. If you, if you laid Alex Whittles down on the floor and you say, right, where his feet are, that's the ground floor. And where his head is, that's the floor this, that's mm -hmm. how how steep the steps are yep um it's yeah it's not not ideal when you get older let's just say that no it's it, um i kind of had the same so this is an older house as well so the stairs were steep um mm. so that that was part of what i did as well i kind of flattened it out by moving it back a bit upstairs and then down a bit so they're not as steep um but Poor Alex Whittles could probably not walk on my stairs because he would hit his head. I mean, it's not a problem for me. He's like uh, almost twice my height. Not that much, but uh, my house is, is very good for me and not so much for, for him. Oh, you'd love our house here because some of the ceilings are like, do this on me. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be fine. I'd be, you know, I can touch the ceiling for the first time. Yay. Yeah, I mean, I'm in a house where I can touch the ceiling, which is, I've never had before. Yeah. Uh, so in the kitchen, so some rooms I can't jump. And you think, right. you ne nah, man, you never need to jump in a house. But you still think, well, I can't jump. I want to jump. But no, <laughs> no. It's, is that strange? No, never mind. Okay. No, I, I, I do the same. So are you working, are you base? I mean, how are you getting your kind of skills? Are you kind of working with someone else or are you just using YouTube? Uh, no, so I'm uh, getting a lot of help from my parents. Um, that's where I've learned, you know, growing up, um, helping them around the old apartment where I grew up and doing things like putting up, you know, walls and wallpaper and painting and things like that. Um, but I still need help with, with the larger things. Um, so sometimes like this weekend, my parents uh, come by and they help me with the bigger stuff and then I can do all the painting and all the details and things like that. Um, and honestly, in this house, so, so this was pretty much I had to do everything uh, in every single room. So I'm like, I mean, it can't get any worse. I'm just going to try pulling this thing off the wall. And if it breaks, I just have to replace it. Um, so it's, you know, I don't have to worry about anything when everything has to be done. Um, so it's, it's just, you know, having having the courage to try and then also the money to fix things if it doesn't work out the way it's supposed to. So you have to be kind of careful. But um, you know, you just have to, you just have to try if it's something you don't know, ask someone or look it up. Um, but so far it's been, it's been fine. I'm learning a ton of new things. So that's fun. Fun. What about what are you doing? Any of the wiring or the plumbing? No, um, no, I don't touch those things. Um, although I can, I can kind of, you know, uh, um, detach things from the wall and put it back, but not pull new wires or anything like that. And plumbing, I just, I just uh, take apart everything under the sink to clean it, but I don't install new things. I think plumbing is slightly. I mean, I'm yeah, I'm really nervous. So whenever I touch the light switch and stuff, I replaced it once. I replaced it with a wireless one, thinking I'm really cool and stuff. And I am. Um, I got a little shock. It was a big shock. But let's just say I did swear quite loudly. Um, 
I thought I could just screw it back on the wall. It'll be fine if I don't. I thought I'd just save some time rather than had to, uh, you know wired it up and tested it, and then I forgot. Well, I'll turn it off and put it back on the wall. No, I just mm-hmm. put it back on the wall. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm, I'm I, actually that's something I'm very careful with is just turning off the power before touching anything and just like double checking, plug in a lamp. It's it's not on. Okay, I can touch this part here. Um. But yeah, it's uh, I I've been posting a lot of my pictures and videos to um, my Twitter alt cat with tools, um, and I do get some comments on that. People are like, "That doesn't look like safety shoes." I'm like, "What do you mean? I can't use slippers to knock down walls." I mean, it works. Um, so yeah, yeah I, I I don't think it everything I'm mm-hmm. doing right, but I'm getting it done. Well, you can see can you see that. Yeah, that's coming through very well. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I put so for you there. Oh uh, yes, I, I can see something. Yeah, that was. What yeah. did you play with? Well, I sort of cut it. I was taking some glass out of a greenhouse and went like that, and um, and it was just sort of gushing with blood, and so I just just yeah. wrapped it up with tape. It happened. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Should have. Yeah. I was. Yeah, it was a last pain. You know. I was in a hurry. Um, I think the only thing that I've been told I couldn't buy was a chainsaw. Right. Because, you know, Yeah, I, I I'm can't use, use that inside anyway. Uh, for the bit of, bit of gardening, it, I thought, you know, I have had a few incidents where I was, I've got an electric saw. Have you got, oh, I love my electric saw. Oh, I love my electric saw. Um, and I was cutting some wood outside. Don't, I can't remember. Yeah, it was here, and then, and, but if you, if the wood gets like, if it squeezes in on the saw blade, um, sort of it starts to chug, like, and mm-hmm. violently, and then I kind of ooh, ah, and, and went back in the wood, and, like this sort of close to my foot, and I was wearing Converse, and I thought yeah. that probably wasn't clever. Yeah, I should probably yeah. learn from that. <laughs> nah, I'd be fine. No, I think. I think it's important to to not be fearful of trying new things, but you don't have to be careless or reckless. Um, you, I mean, I'm I'm w- when they removed my stairs and I was on the uh, top floor looking down into my basement. I'm like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play around with the big hole through my ba- entire house. You got a basement? Yeah, three floors. Cool. What, what's, yeah, plus so, an attic. So, basement. Um, ground floor, first floor, and attic. Yes. Cool. What are you going to do with all that space? Well, apparently I'm filling it up um, <laughs> because if you have space, your your stuff just kind of magically expands to fill up the space. Yeah. Um, no, so I th- one thing is, so I moved from a tiny apartment, a, a small one-bedroom apartment where everything, my entire uh, day-to-day for the first half of this pandemic was just like moving in a triangle uh between you know a couple of pieces of furniture and i just i have to get up and out um so i moved so i have a separate office just being able to close the door when i'm done with work and just go downstairs um it just kind of helps separate work and and uh spare time and also i have a guest room so once i can have guests i can you know invite people over if uh if we can do that at some point uh or just having my my parents here um which is nice they live a few hours away so now i can actually have them over here yep so do you have plans did you did you see the house and go oh basement i'm gonna fill it i'm gonna fill it with water it's gonna be a pool and we're gonna do this and you you smiling yeah, like I, you I, had no <laughs> yes, I that that was pretty much my reaction when I walked in. I was like, oh, everything is so ugly. I can do everything I want in here and get it exactly because I, I would have to um, have found a house that was like move in ready and just everything was perfect or something where I can do everything myself. So I, I went for the cheaper option with more labor. Um, but yeah, I kind of had the same thing. So in the basement, there were two basically just like empty rooms. I was like, oh, I have a bathroom and a laundry room. So that was my, my first project. Um, so now I have a big fancy bathroom and a laundry room. I have some issues with that. So, you know, renovations never, never go to plan. Um, but now I'm just taking one, one 
room at the time. Yeah. Stairs are done. So my living room is pretty much done now, which is nice. Um, yeah. And then home office at some point is going to be pink. It's going to be Catherine pink. I have my brand color. Um, yes. So I, I figured out the color that I use for my website and my little logo thingy. Um, I've figured out the paint code for that. So at some point I'm going to go and buy Catherine pink and paint at least one wall in my office, which is going to be fun. Should be the, the, the back wall. So when people yeah, see so. you, it would be in the background. Well, yeah, you... I think so. And these built-in like closets here, I just ugh, they look horrible. Um, but yeah, this is what I have right now. So uh, I mean, it takes time to to renovate. But I have an office. I I mean, I'm I'm fortunate and lucky and privileged and thankful that I have this opportunity. I actually have an office um, now. I just I I just really wish that I could meet my friends again and have friends over as well. That would be nice. It will come. It will be. It will happen sooner than you think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the vaccines are starting to happen now, and it will take a while for them to roll out. But um, not much is going to happen over Christmas with that. But we'll we'll see what happens. There's no point. We'll see. Of, yeah. I'm I'm very excited to uh to get back into community things at least. Um. Haven't really had a lot of mod motivation this year, so I'm hoping that next year will be better. But as you can tell, I'm very excited to actually talk to people again about things that I care about because I think we've been chatting for 20 additional minutes compared to what we were supposed oh, to. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> well, we, we were on the house, and I thought, let's let's do the house. Two more things. So yep. one is, uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask you your favorite episode. I mean, I can ask you your favorite episode of of geeks on screens if you would like um, the one with simon <laughs> um there's a question from the richard herring emergency question book and that right. is it's got a uh, thousand and one questions in and it's just a random question from there a number okay so the the um if it's rude we move on it's, it's as easy as that and then then the other one is who to nominate for the next conversation it's kind of like a passing okay. on thing. So, so someone nominated you. So, yeah, and then kind of then we move on. So it saves me work, really, that someone else does the introduction. It's, it's, I don't want to work. So, uh, and so you can do that at the end, or you can then ha have time to think about it. Should have mentioned it before. So a number from one to 1001. Four. Oh, OK. Any reason? No. People always go quite high. Yeah. Um. Okay. We might have had this, but have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Um. I I've been to the Colorado mountains, and they have a pass a or like a crossing Bigfoot sign. Does that count? I w I was looking, but I didn't see any real ones. But um, I have a picture of me next to the the little Bigfoot oh, the, sign. The, yeah. Um, was it? Was there no evidence of Bigfoot? Bigfoot like like droppings or footprints? Or... I think I scared him away. I'm, I'm very threatening, and with my Norwegian hiking skills. <laughs> Norwegian hiking skills. Yeah. Norwegian hiking yeah. Skills? We're big hikers, mountain hikers. We just, you know, yeah. I would, for some reason, I would do that. That's a cross country skiing maneuver. Uh, yeah. Is well, that hiking? Yeah, probably. I'm not. I... Well, I usually I'm hiking like this, but you can't really see my arm. So just trying to yeah, 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 gesture. Yeah. Well, you've got two yeah. poles. It's the same movement. You do, but it, it kind of depends on, you know, what kind of skiing thingy you're doing. I don't ski, I hike. Uh, okay. It just it reminds me of a game I played when I was like 10 or 12, which is like the Winter Olympics. And mm -hmm. so you would just use a joystick to do this uh, cross country skiing, which was always really boring. You'd, you'd ski for a bit and then you would shoot. Oh, that's biath biathlon. Yeah. That is my favorite sport in the whole world. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> just, just watching that. That is literally the only sport that I watch. And I actually yell at the screen when, when they actually hit the targets. And yeah, I, I love it. <laughs> 
I mean, you can't get any more Norwegian than that. You ski for a bit and then you shoot something and yeah. It's, it's actually, I think it's from the Norwegian military way back when they called it uh, military something, something. So it was based off the Norwegian military who actually did wear skis and then with the rifles on their back. Yeah, I, I guess if you've got to get across country, that's probably the most practical way of doing it and yep. quiet and easy, you know, and you're good at it and then you can then shoot at the end which you probably be pretty cold is it the cold that, that makes it hard or is it concentration? no i think it's just like if you're racing and then you have your pulse going through the roof and then you have to relax and actually breathe and aim and actually hit the target uh, yes. it's a yeah evil. but that's the exciting part as well because just watching people ski is not really that exciting because as you know they're just walking around but when you add the additional part of shooting and then you might miss and then you might have to walk you know an extra penalty round or you know whatever it, it's just it's unpredictable and it's fun oh, okay right mm -hmm. i didn't know i didn't know that much about it yeah that's I've, that's the only sport i care about so <laughs> you know i can talk about that for hours <laughs> All right. Well, um, next time we, we're going to meet next time, and we can carry on with the with the skiing. I can't. There was a particular name, isn't there, for that event? The cross country biathlon. biathlon. So we can carry on with the biathlon, and then maybe discuss bush gardens. Um, maybe. Maybe if we're lucky. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. It's been wonderful, thank and you thank you all for me. watching. And I'm sorry for chatting for so long. No. By the way. No, no, no. Well, time flies. Unfortunately, that's what I. I have been a bit bit tardy with not trying to keep us to time. Um but um but thank you very much. And, thank um, you. Thank you all for watching. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh I was gonna mention something. Data toboggan. Yes. New events. Yes. Yes. People synapse. Should... Yes, it's a synapse event. People need to register like yes do, just google it with bing or with alta vista or your favorite search engine yahoo whatever you know other ones are available sorry i thought i had should mention that earlier go but... register yes or if you have a session if you want to start speaking um i'm happy to help with that yeah, we've got some 10 minute sessions and then some 45 minute sessions but yeah but but submit there's no there's no registration page yet sorry no, there will be <laughs> All right. soon coming soon all right so i had to get that in i completely forgot see that's sorry <laughs> well thank you all for watching all right bye